So, necromancy is usually framed as being not a particularly good idea. It usually has some sort of large downside. And today, we definitely get to see some pretty damn rough video game necromancy. Now, I remember Hawken, I believe it was from a Total Biscuit video, like way back in the day. Right, Hawken, mech shooter, looked really cool. Came from this, at the time, surprisingly small indie team. But it just, it has been passed around from dev to dev, publisher to publisher. The Hawken name has, has just been chaos. And now it's made its way to 505 Games and something very bizarre called Hawken Reborn has happened. And it's really not went that well. So, for you to actually understand this, in 2011, we got the first look at Hawken, right? It's from a very small indie studio. Um, it was like less than 10 people. And for a lot of us, it just kind of looked like, holy shit, this is the future of Mac. It just looked good. Uh, the aesthetic, I think, was uh, quite nailed. It felt quite like... Um I was just something to like the recoil, the animations. Felt quite visceral. It was set in this big futuristic uh, mega city. The sound design was great. The movement looked really fun. And they had a whole bunch of partnerships too um, with Oculus, with Asus, with Nvidia. These things all um, kind of helped, right? Helped kind of outstrip what a team like that would normally be able to do. They got things like destructible walls, destructible terrain, which when you think about Max fighting in a mega city, that is pretty much perfect. So in 2011, it was picked up by DJ2 Entertainment for a motion picture adaptation. Um, and this was quite an interesting time more broadly because uh, in 2012, we saw Armored Core 5. Obviously, we've got a new Armored Core game coming out uh, summer of this year. I absolutely cannot wait. We also saw Steel Battalion. We saw new Mac Warrior, and uh, of course, Titanfall. That was uh, 2014. So with all of this, Hawken was just cool, right? Um, here's a little quote. Um, from Game Industry Not Biz, there's nothing else like Hawken out there. The thing I think really sells Hawken is it's visually stunning and we nailed the feeling of being in a mech. I think that really speaks to just the quality of the animations, the visuals, the presentation. Now, with all this good going on for them, the next decision was a bit bizarre, right? Because the original pitch was to sell the game directly and only through their own website for 30 bucks on launch in 2012. Uh, suffice to say, this is a really bad idea. Steam is really important. Even back then, Steam was absolutely humongous. You will lose far more, uh, far, far, far more revenue than what Valve's cut would cost you in a situation like this. Now, eventually, they did move to Steam February 2014. There was a free-to-play uh, model change to sort of lower that barrier of entry. Uh, now, at the time, people weren't exactly thrilled about mech frames being um, on the shop, right? That it wasn't just cosmetic things. Um, but I suppose I think back to... Was it was a Blacklight Retribution, the one where you rented guns? Like, <laughs> I think it was still in that era of free-to-play where a lot of um, odd things were being tried out. But of course, in a situation like this, when you're paying for the mechs with real money potentially, and then they're imbalanced, like, you know, new ones are too powerful, that's obviously bad. But anyway, in 2014, the publisher, Meteor Entertainment, were in pretty damn dire straits, right? Um, to the point where even the furniture in their Seattle office was for sale as they were trying to cut those costs. And this led to Hawken effectively going on ice for a year, but then a bit of a lifeline was thrown in the form of Reloaded Games, who acquired the IP uh, for development and publishing. Now, this is a really funny time because if you remember the MMO APB, well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is also the same group that took their own box price shooter, APP Reloaded, and turned it into a free-to-play game. Uh, obviously, it didn't really work out that well in the long term. Uh, so, they did try with Hawken, right? They got the game, like, actually having updates again. They got it over to the consoles in 2016. Um, now, those console versions were published by 505 Games, and they're still, uh, you know, they're, they're still being uh, maintained. But the thing is, it never really got there on PC, and a lot of that more hardcore Mac audience, of course, is in PC. 2017, Reloaded then announced that they would be pulling the plug, that they'd be delisting Hawken from Steam and stopping the sale of DLCs. So on the 2nd of January, 2018, Hawken on PC dies again. From there, we enter fan projects, right? Um, but then, five years later, the present day, 505 Games just announced, actually, Hawken Reborn's a thing, and it's coming out in two days. Yeah, there's the Reddit post. This is not going to go well, sadly. So, 
Hawk and Reborn, what the hell is it? The answer is a very bizarre minimum viable product. So they were trying to sort of pitch this as being like a real effort to make the game work. It's going to launch with PVE, no multiplayer, six story driven missions, one extraction shooter style sort of open like zone um, or open area like zone with an increasing difficulty that gives you better rewards and that it would be free to play. Right, so this is a free-to-play PVE game, at least for its launch, that will be developed over time. They pitch this as being an early access, and you can see here the roadmap, right? So, phase one, early access polish, first time user experience, core gameplay, core combat. Then, moving all the Hawkins sort of base mechs, that's uh, that's two, weapons and thrusters in two, mech ability tech, third person camera, story patrol missions, and then phase three, adding um, a whole bunch more like new mechs, new zones, new story arc, all that kind of thing. So this is their plan to just march forward to this game being great. But unfortunately, uh, it did release very recently and it's it's not went well. It's obviously a mostly negative on Steam, but when you really get down to it, some of it's bizarre. Like everything that people would not want from AI being at an art pipeline is present in their cutscenes. Like it is eye roll levels of terrible it is um you know it is not using it is not using ai as a tool or you know anything as like a new tool to uh, help artists it is just trying to lazily shit out a bunch of awful cutscenes. so you'll see that in a bit it is really embarrassing and uh, uh i mean it's it's exactly what happens when i i think the people who are more concerned with profiteering look at a new technology as a way to just be a bit of a bandit, right? To sort of grift your way through a few cinematics for free rather than to, you know, actually put in the work and the creativity that you need to. So the reaction, though, more broadly is bizarre. And this is even with 505 trying to, uh, you know, ensure that expectations didn't build too much. Because if you say Hawk and Reborn and then people wait to find out what Reborn is in three months, stuff's going to go wild. They're going to expect more. But in this case, the gameplay feels worse. The art direction is worse. The microtransactions are worse. And even though there's not that, you know, even with the limited amount of content there, people aren't really having a great time. Go through the Steam forums and you basically see everything's quite bad. My brother in Christ, you literally have pay-to-win microtransactions in a game that's currently locked to single-player PvE. Yeah, pretty damn bizarre. Uh, you go onto the uh, the Hawkins subreddit, you're seeing more similar things. And if you want to take uh, just a few critics, um, some people, uh, some of whom actually did like Hawkin before, um, here's some things, right? I completed the campaign and I patrolled around a bit in patrol. I didn't collect enough materials to craft even one single gun. Can't craft a gun. Done all the content. Can't craft a gun. Uh, one upgrade reduced the gun's reload time from two seconds to 1.98 seconds. What a dizzying thrill. That's insane, right? That's very bizarre. Shouldn't have happened like that. But this is where it gets a bit more insidious. If you don't have enough resources, the game will helpfully point out you can just buy, uh, you know, you can buy the parts, calculating a bespoke price to finish the job. This costs script, which is your microtransaction currency. Uh, one mech is on sale for 1161 script. Uh, anyone who's played a hostile free-to-play game before will not be surprised to learn that this is just little more than you can buy in a single bundle because 1100 script is 399 and 2400 script is 799. The tactic being to have you buy the 799, have a bunch of script left over, think, ah, may as well spend that, and now, oh, what's happened? You've been habituated to overcoming their grind with money. Uh, to go over to Fraser Brown, he said, talking his back, except it uh, really isn't. They've taken the corpse of, of a fantastic PvP Mac romp that died well before its time and turned it into an ugly PvE game I had to stop playing because the broken mouse sensitivity and over-enthusiastic cockpit, anima uh, cockpit animations have hammered my head. And he ends just questioning, like, who the hell is this for? Ed go over to Luke Plunkett. The jarring discrepancy between what we remember and what's being offered today uh, continues through into the game itself. And uh, he highlights the artistic side of things. So if you look here, right, you see Hawken as it originally came out. Um, so is it a bit more like, you could say, gray, a bit more desaturated? Yes, it is. Um, that's somewhat their point, like the overall aesthetic that they are going for. You move it over here and you just see, ah, vibrancy up, saturation up, 
but absolutely something is, uh, you know, something is lost. It's like, this is an art direction that can work, but it does feel out of place within this IP, especially given what people um, were used to. But then what's really bizarre, and I'll hop over to Luke's tweet here, is what they've done with the AI art. So a lot of the time in the industry, whenever like people talk about AI art, it's maybe some boring things like uh, anything to do with like UVs and 3D modeling. Some of that stuff that's like just a complete, you know, that, that sucks. Or even some of the AI, uh, you know, accelerated uh, rotoscoping techniques. Uh, did you know in the third Star Wars, uh, the third prequel Star Wars movie, people at ILM, poor bastards, they had to hand rotoscope the lightsaber fight at the end. And like, that's a long lightsaber fight. And those things are moving damn fast. That was all hand rotoed. So the likes of some AI technique coming in there and being like, all right, this is your mask for Obi-Wan. Thumbs up. That's really good. It enables the creative to, you know, instead of just being sitting there doing boring roto, uh, to actually get into, you know, the proper creative work. Um, or maybe people, they just want to slightly modify a texture or something, or they want to use something to make their texture tile a bit better, or try out some variations in a texture, all, you know, based on their own artwork. That's the sort of thing that uh, I think in the industry, people are like, okay, well, I could see this being a tool in the same way that you've got the content aware fill tool and many other things in Photoshop. But you look at this and it's quite evidently just like, you know, you, you could you could almost in your head see the mid journey prompt for this image, <laughs> right? And then what's bizarre, uh, the stethoscope just like changes. Um, it's another screenshot, but the stethoscope changes bizarrely. And here, this um, like this iPad, is being held upside down, which is very bizarre, right? Uh, look at the hand. Look at the way these blend together. And I think Midjourney 5.1 can do hands quite a lot better, but you look at that and it's like, this isn't what a hand should look like. So that this even came out, to be honest, is, uh, it is sort of crazy. It's very, very bizarre. Even look at uh, the rendering of her lip. Like, it, it's just, it's just, you know, it's it's subtly wrong. Um, it's just very bizarre. So this is evidently like, my default is to say, this is lazy tripe and I cannot believe they tried to get away with this. The flip side of that would be 505 game said, do this now, you have this much time, we want these cutscenes, blah, 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 blah. And people are just like, ah, shit, okay, we'll just do this the fastest way we can. Um, but yeah, you just look at it and it's like, it's amateur as shit. Like, look at this. Th this is so, so bizarre. Um, <laughs> so much torment. Yes, absolutely. So uh, yes, Luke, thanks for pointing that out. I think we can all quite enjoy clowning on the, uh, the great misuse of technology. And that's always the unfortunate thing. There's some new technology. It's powerful. What happens? Uh, it gets used in the laziest, lowest quality way. Uh, and that sucks. Now, who even made this? That's what's weird, because it seems that an internal studio, 505 Game Studio DR, were involved. Now, they have done a few things before. Uh, they're not really large projects. There's some ports, um, some like ports to console and mobile, like with Terraria. Uh, but as for Hawk and Reborn, it really feels like they were given barely any budget to just make something exist uh, so that the Hawk and IP could be exploited which is bizarre because this is this isn't exploiting the ip this is just putting a bullet into the back of its head and of course you look at the original team you know they had multiple funding rounds with the tens of millions of dollars so quite evidently this is just saying like well look at those investors those dumb fuckers look at all the money they paid to make this happen uh we're just going to quickly uh you know transmute uh legacy ip into cash um, just that, uh, you know, alchemy doesn't work. <laughs> and basically, as soon as there's a minimum amount of content to ship, they just threw it in Steam. And it's bizarre, 505 are, are so weird. Like, they publish Death Stranding uh, and Control and, and some other, like, you know, incredible titles. But then they just have the likes of uh, Crime Boss, uh, Rocky City. They have Hawken Reborn. That is a is a pretty black mark. It, it's bizarre uh, because with, with, with the console version, like, they did that. You know, they, they have experience with this. They put it onto console. How then does it turn from that experience, which is relatively better than this one, to, to this one? It's really odd. I mean, y you could almost say like, oh, hang on a second. Are you, <laughs> did you hear people like Titanfall 2 and you're, you're trying something? It's it's bizarre. I mean, as a business move, having an entry in this genre is, is not a problem, right? Um, you know, 
you, you could almost say it's like Saints Row to GTA. It's like, okay, this kind of game's doing well. Let's do one. You know, this is like hitting the randomized button on a bunch of assets and seeing what game uh, is is there. So the question then is what, you know, what could they have what could they have done with this? Like turning it into a monetized grind is really odd to me. They're maybe thinking like, okay, we've tried this as an arena shooter multiple times and it didn't work. It's too niche. Um, I mean, the likes of uh, Mac Warrior, like it is very niche. The Mac Warrior people are big into Mac Warrior. Um, I think it's kind of like monetized as such. Uh, but with Hawken, I think they're always going for like a little bit more of that like fast paced cool factor and a larger audience. So I think it's one of those things where they've seen a lot of arena shooters like they just literally do not hit critical mass. So you can't really do anything there. Um, in, in which case they're trying to see if PVE can work. But uh, if, if that is the plan, then this is, I mean, as I said, they, they, I don't, <laughs> I don't this is a bit bullshit, but it's as if, you know, you've got the randomize button and a character creator. This seems to be as if whatever engine they're using just has a randomize button. It's just like, ah, here's all my assets. Randomize. Let's see what game comes out. Uh, that's what it's like. So this is, this is sad, you know, um, the, the idea of just hoarding a bunch of IP and doing cheap shit like this. Uh, it does it does suck it's weird because like with 505 games embracer group broadly they you know they do pursue a very diversified strategy right it, the, the group is massive they publish a massive number of games and within that there's a lot of winners there's also some losers uh, i mean people used to talk about blumhouse movies where it was just like yeah we cost control well and we put out a lot of content um some of it is shit some of it's really 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 good right even if you take a24 like they have such a premium feel but like you actually look they publish a lot of stuff that's not particularly great either it's just that overall like they've been able to have this like pretty damn successful volume strategy things are cost controlled and uh you know it kind of it, it does go well not working here though um it's sad there's not really anything else to say about this as for what they should do, I don't know. Um, I think this is probably just dead in the water. I wouldn't be surprised if this was shut down in a while. The thing that I've long said is that minimum viable products, like they work in tech because the MVP is a solution to a problem. Someone will find that to be really useful. And even though it doesn't do everything, it maybe does the thing that they want really, really well. Almost as good as if it was not an MVP and it was a fully fledged released product. And in a situation like this with games, what, you know, what is an MVP in games? Well, I think ultimately in games, an MVP is a, like it is a true vertical slice. So if you're pitching this as your MVP and it is worthy of a mostly negative in Steam, even though it's free, I think that just shows this is nowhere near what it needed to be. I think that's probably it, Dad. So I suppose let me know what you thought about this. Uh, sad. Don't like seeing this happen. Ugh. Anyway, you can check out this video next, and I'll see you.